Hey everybody, this is Lexi, and thank you so much for joining me for another session. I've had a lot of people ask me before, Lexi, how do you write a song? And I have done some studio series in the past. In fact, I'll put the little info bubble at the top of the screen somewhere to link you to those other videos where I've actually taken you through the process and what I go through when I'm preparing to write a song from start to finish. Um, I think I did that with my video, the remix I did to Bad and Bougie by the Migos, and then the remix I did to Missy Elliott's song, I'm Better. Um, I actually created my own remix and I had studio series videos for those two songs, I know for sure. But if you would like to know more about how I write my music and also hear some tips on how you can write a great song, keep watching, keep tuning in because I'm about to tell you, obviously. Um, but first, I want to let you in on a little bit of history about my evolution and how I have developed my songwriting style. Um, when I was younger, I've been singing since I was three, but I've been writing songs since I was about eight years old. So when I was that young, I didn't really know anything about music production or how to get my hands on an instrumental or a beat. So I would actually have imaginary beats in my head and I would write, you know, have that music production stuck in my head and use my imagination as to how I would want my song to sound. I did take piano lessons when I was younger, so I had a really good understanding of song structure and how to make the song balanced as far as making sure the verses were the same amount of bars and the hooks were the same amount of bars and just a good, you know, um, verse hook, verse hook, bridge hook type of structure. So um, the reason why I think I was so able to keep that good imagination with my beats is because I had that foundation set in piano lessons. So I would actually keep an imagination of how I would want my songs to sound. And of course, after piano lessons became a thing, I got a little more in tune with notes and creating melodies of my own on the piano. So I got a keyboard when I was younger and it had that little bank on there where I could actually store some of the music, some of the songs that I was doing. Um, and so I used that for a while, but that filled up really quickly. I could only store five songs and I obviously needed more than that. So that filled up really quickly. And from there, I moved on to finding free beats online. Back then, my site, my go-to that I went to was called soundclick.com, which it's probably still up and running, but I haven't visited in a while. But that's what I used to use when I was younger. And I would just try to find all of the free beats and all of the downloads that had the least amount of tags on them as much as I could find. And I actually wrote two entire albums when I was in seventh grade. I think I mentioned that in another video. But um, I wrote a lot of songs based off of that. And I would record on my computer using a program called Audacity. And my computer back in middle school had a built-in microphone. And that's how I would get my songs recorded. And I would be able to put my own songs onto my MP3 players and my iPod players. So that was always really cool growing up. Um, fast forward to college, I actually went to the Art Institute of Atlanta for audio production and had access to studios there, but there was a lot of conflict, you know, as far as fighting to get studio time among the students because we had schoolwork to do, obviously, um, had to finish projects for our classes. So I kept the same mentality of writing a song down before recording it and then going into the studio to get it done and take as much advantage of my time as I could in that sense. But now that I'm graduated and I've been working out of studios ever since I've gone to school for audio production, I've been kind of spoiled in a sense because I get that access to studios all the time. So now I only write when I'm in the studio. I actually don't like writing outside of the studio anymore. So that's kind of my evolution of how my songwriting has developed. But now I'm gonna share with you a few tips um, as far as things that I've learned in my experience as a songwriter, some tips that will help you to write your very own song, something that'll be great and something that represents you as an artist. So, let me get my notes and we gonna start this thing. Number one is going to be ask yourself what you want to talk about. Before I physically sit down and get out a piece of paper or a notebook to actually write out the song, I will recount in my head or reflect on what I did for the day or maybe even what I did that week, what's gone on in my life. And I'll reflect on certain situations that I've gone through and how it made me feel. And I'll try to make a spinoff basically of whatever I pick and choose to talk about from my day, from my week, or from something that's just been bothering me for a long time that I feel like I really want to get out. Um, 
it's important to do that because you really want to figure out a theme for your song first before just jumping into something. You want to have an idea of how you're feeling and treat the song like a diary, honestly. That's what I do. Music is therapy for me and these song books that I have and the actual track, that's like the physical representation of how I'm feeling and then the song is the audible representation of how I'm feeling. It's just like a diary, so treat it as such and it helps you get your thoughts out. So ask yourself what you want to talk about, ask yourself how you feel, and then that leads us to our next step. Focus on one theme or feeling. So once you've kind of reflected on the events from the day or the week or whatever you decided you want to write about or whatever event or scene you're replaying in your head, um, you want to sit down and try to pick out, is there a common theme? Is there a common feeling? Um, is there a time when I was super happy and I feel like I can easily write about that? Or does something really make me really angry and I feel like I need to get that off my chest as well? Figure out after recollecting all of those thoughts from the day or from whenever you chose, whatever time period you chose, figure out what is the best feeling, the most relatable feeling that you can connect to in that moment, because that's going to be the strongest emotion that you're going to use to create a great song. So naturally from there, the next step is going to be to determine the vibe of your song. Based on the feeling or the theme that you chose, is this going to be a happy song? Is it going to be sad? Is it going to be turned up? Is it going to be emotional? Just figure out where your headspace is at. Figure out the emotion that you most connect to in that moment and then just stick with that and run with it. The next thing you want to ask yourself is who are you talking to? Are you talking to yourself? Are you addressing a specific person? Or are you talking to a group of people when you're singing this song? So you want to keep an audience or keep a subject in mind for who this song is talking to about or what the song is for. I've said before that my music serves as a kind of diary, as a kind of therapy for me. Um, something that I struggle with is actually being quick-witted in the moment. I don't like arguing, I don't really like confrontation, so that being said, it's a lot easier for me to write things out and to get my thoughts clearly out on a piece of paper, which eventually turns into a song. So I actually talk about people a lot. Actually, I only talk about people. If you ask me a specific question about any one of my songs, I can tell you the exact moment that I felt what I was feeling in, the, in that song. I can tell you the situation that was surrounding that song and any other detail you want to know. I could probably tell you the first and last name of the person that that song was inspired by. So keep in mind who you're talking to and who you want to get that message across to while you're writing the song. The next thing I would say is once you sit down to write, if there are any particular phrases or words that stick out to you and you just can't seem to get it out of your head, don't fight it, just go with it. Find a way to incorporate that word or that phrase into the song. I found that if something is repeating in your head over and over and over again, you should probably stick to your gut feeling and go ahead and include it because that's what's going to make a great song. Um, I can give you the example of my song, Crazy Time, which is on my first album. Um, the type of beat that that song has, I really wanted to write a really deep story behind it, which is what I achieved in the verses, but then when it came time for me to write the hook, I got stuck because I wanted to write something that was going to be really good and something that tied the whole song together. So I banged my head for hours and hours trying to think of something deep to say, but also have something catchy that people would, you know, sing along to and bop along with, and I just, I couldn't think of anything until suddenly these notes popped into my head. It was um, basically like music soul child type of vibe that So that popped into my head and then I thought to myself, now do I really want that to be it in my hook? It seems so simple. It seems like it's not enough basically. Um, and then I thought to myself how crazy it was that I was banging my head about this line and that's where the line I think I would go crazy actually came from. So that's how I decided to just stick with those notes, keep those la la's and, the, and those oohs. Simplicity is much better sometimes versus trying to think of something too complex and ending up with, you know, garbage. But I kept it simple in that instance and then just had one repeating line through the hook and that tied the song together perfectly and as a matter of fact that's 
probably the most recognizable part of the song, those la la's and that ooh. All because I kept it simple, all because that little phrase kept popping up into my head. So I kept it and I ran with it. And that's um, a great segue into the next point that I have. Don't overthink it. Whatever pops into your head, whatever sticks into your head, just go with the flow. Like I said before, you don't want to overthink it. You don't want to put too much pressure on yourself when you're writing, because ultimately when you're writing a song, everything is supposed to come fairly easily to you. Now it's okay to, if something is in your head, but you don't necessarily like it, or you might think it's too simple, stick to that same idea. And maybe you can flip those words around, or maybe you can find a different word to describe whatever feeling you're trying to convey right but definitely don't overthink it just go with the flow don't put too much pressure on yourself you want to keep yourself feeling as free and creative as possible to keep those creative juices going the quickest way to give yourself writer's block is to pressure yourself to think of something great just think of anything that comes naturally to you that's what writing is all about the song is a representation of who you are the beautiful thing about that is as long as it's something that you like, that's really all that matters. The cherry on top, the icing on the cake is if other people can vibe to it and other people really like it too. But first stick with what you think is going to be the best thing. And going back to a point I made just a few moments ago, another tip I want to suggest to you is don't worry about the title of the song so much until after the song is actually written. Um, I've had a lot of experience where I thought about what happened that day. I had a theme in my head. I had a feeling in my head. I didn't want to start writing the song until I had this title, but I could not think of a good title to put on this song that wasn't even written yet. So my advice to you would be, don't worry about the title of the song until after, because if you put too much pressure on yourself, again, you're gonna cause yourself to get writer's block and you're just gonna delay yourself and impede yourself from writing the song and from actually getting it done. So worry about the title after that. If you absolutely feel like you must get the title before writing the song, I would say give yourself five minutes, literally just five minutes to think about a title. If you still can't think of anything, just go ahead, start writing the song, start getting those feelings out. Um, and then if you get a writer's block, you know, while you're writing a verse or while you're writing a hook, then maybe go back and revisit you know, thinking about a title for your song, but don't pressure yourself, don't bang your head against the wall trying to think of a title for a song that doesn't exist yet. That really doesn't make sense. Take it from me, I know. <laughs> I really wanted to think of the typical 10 tips for this video, but I really, it's a struggle thinking of these last few tips. So I'm just gonna leave you with this last one. Make sure that you are enjoying the process of writing the song. Going back to the point I made earlier about feeling pressured, you never wanna pressure yourself into feeling like you have to do this, it has to be perfect, it has to be done by a certain amount of time in a certain area, a certain environment. That's not what songwriting is supposed to be about. For me anyway, I use songwriting as a type of therapy, again, and I'm gonna say it over and over again until some of y'all get it. <laughs> but writing and songwriting for me, it's a therapy, it's like putting my feelings and my and my heart into these songs so it's uh things that come naturally to me if you're noticing that something is not coming naturally to you while you're writing this song it is okay to take a step back from it to clear your mind from it and really step away from doing anything musically related and give yourself some time to just do something else and then maybe come back to it you know after you've given your your mind a little bit of a break from that you should really be enjoying the process. The only time that you maybe won't enjoy the process, or at least you may not think that you're enjoying the process, is if you're writing about a particularly hard subject, something that's really emotional, or something that's really hard to talk about, and it's, you know, in that sense, it's making you sad and kind of stopping your progress in that way, but those are actually the best kind of songs to write. You don't have to overcomplicate it. You don't have to think about it too hard. Just write again what comes naturally to you and that is what makes the best songs. Um, if you listen to my music, a lot of my songs have been inspired from the toughest moments that, moments that I felt like were really tough in my life. And most of those were centered around heartbreaks and disappointments, 
or just petty situations with different people I've encountered in my life. And those have turned out to be the best songs because they came from a place that was real, from a place that was genuine, something that I obviously connected to because it's something that I experienced. And I let it flow. I put everything on the track. I didn't put any pressure on myself to have any crazy metaphors or crazy word schemes in some instances. Again, simplicity is better. You don't want to overcomplicate things, especially if it's just flowing out naturally. You don't want to restrict that flow, that creative flow, that creative flow in any way. So just keep that in mind. And that concludes my list of tips for you on how to write your own song. I hope from all of the rambling that I've been doing, from all of the reflecting I've been doing that you, you know, that you've absorbed some of these tips and can apply some of these things to your own songwriting. Um, again, if you liked this video, going into my spiel, <laughs> if you liked this video and you found it helpful, please give me a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you liked about it or ask some questions. Um, if you would like me to give my advice to you personally, then, you know, shoot me an email. I'll provide my email. No, that looks bad. I'll give you my email here. Yeah, there we go. I'll provide you my email right here. You can email me your questions or email me your lyrics or something if you want me to kind of critique and tell you what I like and give you my insight basically on how I feel. But anyway, thank you for watching the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can be notified each and every time I post a new video. As usual, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. I really feel like a notebook is what makes the whole artist process, you know, that's one of the main parts of it is writing the song. That's the most personal part about it. So every artist should definitely have his or her own notebook when they're going to the studio. So there's that. The next thing.